June 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Chronicles chapters 22 and 23 from the Old Testament. David then said, This is the place where the temple of the Lord God will be, along with the altar for burnt sacrifices for Israel. David ordered the resident foreigners in the land of Israel to be called together. He appointed some of them to be stonecutters to chisel stones for the building of God's temple. David supplied a large amount of iron for the nails of the doors of the gates and for braces, more bronze than could be weighed, and more cedar logs than could be counted. The Sidonians and Tyrians had brought a large amount of cedar logs to David. David said, My son Solomon is just an inexperienced young man. And the temple to be built for the Lord must be especially magnificent, so it will become famous and be considered splendid by all the nations. Therefore, I will make preparations for its construction. So David made extensive preparations before he died. He summoned his son Solomon and charged him to build a temple for the Lord God of Israel. David said to Solomon, My son, I really wanted to build a temple to honor the Lord my God. But the Lord said to me, You have spilled a great deal of blood and fought many battles. You must not build a temple to honor me, for you have spilled a great deal of blood on the ground before me. Look, you will have a son who will be a peaceful man. I will give him rest from all his enemies on every side. Indeed, Solomon will be his name. I will give Israel peace and quiet during his reign. He will build a temple to honor me. He will become my son, and I will become his father. I will grant to his dynasty permanent rule over Israel. Now, my son, may the Lord be with you. May you succeed and build a temple for the Lord your God, just as he announced you would. Only may the Lord give you insight and understanding when he places you in charge of Israel so you may obey the law of the Lord your God. Then you will succeed if you carefully obey the rules and regulations which the Lord ordered Moses to give to Israel. Be strong and brave. Don't be afraid and don't panic. Now look, I have made every effort to supply what is needed to build the Lord's temple. I have stored up a hundred thousand talents of gold, one million talents of silver and so much bronze and iron it cannot be weighed, as well as wood and stones. Feel free to add more. You also have available many workers, including stone cutters, masons, carpenters, and an innumerable array of workers who are skilled in using gold, silver, bronze, and iron. Get up and begin the work. May the Lord be with you. David ordered all the officials of Israel to support his son Solomon. He told them, The Lord your God is with you. He has made you secure on every side, for he handed over to me the inhabitants of the region, and the region is subdued before the Lord and his people. Now seek the Lord your God wholeheartedly and with your entire being. Get up and build the sanctuary of the Lord God. Then you can bring the ark of the Lord's covenant and the holy items dedicated to God's service into the temple that is built to honor the Lord. When David was old and approaching the end of his life, he made his son Solomon king over Israel. David assembled all the leaders of Israel along with the priests and the Levites. The Levites, who were 30 years old and up, were counted. There were 38,000 men. David said, Of these, 24,000 are to direct the work of the Lord's temple. 6,000 are to be officials and judges. 4,000 are to be gatekeepers, and 4,000 are to praise the Lord with the instruments I supplied for worship. David divided them into groups corresponding to the sons of Levi, Gershon, Kohath, and Mirai. Gershonites included Laden and Shimei. The sons of Laden, Jehiel, the oldest, Zetham, and Joel, three in all. The sons of Shimei, Shalomoth, Haziel, and Haran, three in all. 
These were the leaders of the family of Laden, the sons of Shimei, Jahath, Zina, Jeesh, and Beriah. These were Shimei's sons, four in all. Jahath was the oldest, and Ziza the second oldest. Jeesh and Beriah did not have many sons, so they were considered one family with one responsibility. The sons of Kohath, Amram, Izhar, Hebron, and Aziel, four in all. The sons of Amram, Aaron, and Moses. Aaron and his descendants were chosen on a permanent basis to consecrate the most holy items, to offer sacrifices before the Lord to serve him and to praise his name. The descendants of Moses, the man of God, were considered Levites. The sons of Moses, Gershom and Eliezer. The son of Gershom, Shabuel, the oldest. The son of Eliezer was Rehabiah, the oldest. Eliezer had no other sons, but Rehabiah had many descendants. The son of Izhar, Shalomith, the oldest. The sons of Hebron, Jeriah, the oldest. Amariah, the second. Jehaziel, the third. And Jechameam, the fourth. The sons of Aziel, Micah, the oldest. And Isaiah, the second. The sons of Mirari, Malai and Mushai, the sons of Malai, Eliezer and Kish. Eliezer died without having sons. He only had daughters. The sons of Kish, their cousins, married them. The sons of Mushai, Malai, Eder, and Jeremoth, three in all. These were the descendants of Levi according to their families, that is, the leaders of families as counted and individually listed, who carried out assigned tasks in the Lord's temple and were twenty years old and up. For David said, The Lord God of Israel has given his people rest, and has permanently settled in Jerusalem. So the Levites no longer need to carry the tabernacle or any of the items used in its service. According to David's final instructions, the Levites, twenty years old and up, were counted. Their job was to help Aaron's descendants in the service of the Lord's temple. They were to take care of the courtyards, the rooms, ceremonial purification of all holy items, and other jobs related to the service of God's temple. They also took care of the bread that is displayed, the flour for offerings, the unleavened wafers, the round cakes, the mixing, and all the measuring. They also stood in a designated place every morning and offered thanks and praise to the Lord. They also did this in the evening and whenever burnt sacrifices were offered to the Lord on the Sabbath and at new moon festivals and assemblies, a designated number were to serve before the Lord regularly in accordance with regulations. They were in charge of the meeting tent and the holy place and helped their relatives the descendants of Aaron in the service of the Lord's temple. God, I love when, when David's talking to his son Solomon and he's like, okay, so here's what's going to happen. You're going to build this temple to God. And this has to be the most important thing in the entire world. Uh, but but don't be afraid. Don't panic. It, it just has to be the most important thing in the entire world. Uh, and poor Solomon. But David gives him wise instructions, which is interesting. He was giving that to Solomon. He said, only may the Lord give you insight and understanding when he places you in charge of Israel. Obey all the rules and regulations which the Lord ordered Moses. Be strong and brave. Sometimes, God, we're given tasks, whether it's within our job or you provide us tasks to carry out in our lives. And our first reaction is to be afraid and panic. Why in the world did you pick me? I can't do this. Don't you understand? I don't have time for this. I don't know how in the world this is going to work. Don't you know this, this, and this is going to happen? But that wasn't your instructions. Your instructions were follow your word. Be strong 
and be brave. Period. So I think we need to remember God, me especially, (laughs) that when things seem overwhelming, whether it's this world or whether it's things that you've given me to do, I need to go back to your word. Your word is the starting point and the ending point and everything in between for everything in my life. Your word is what would give me insight. Your word is what would give me understanding. Your word makes me strong and brave in the face of danger or drama or uncertainty. With you, I have no reason to be afraid. I have no reason to panic. Your constant reassurances and promises throughout this entire book, the Living Bible, how could they not lead somebody to be strong and brave? And as long as we carefully obey what is in this book, you will always be with us and you will always help show us the path that we need to walk. Now, you haven't promised that that path will be easy and we need to be very aware of that. But with that understanding that with you by our side, we can be strong and brave in the face of anything that we happen upon throughout this life. In your son's name we pray. Amen.